What's up guys? Got a uh, quick unboxing today. Not gonna go too much into this because if you know what it is, you know what it is. If not, probably not the video for you. So this is a hot air rework station. Um, there's a couple different names for them like SMD rework, hot air machine, hot air station, PCB repair, repair station, yada, yada, yada. Um, I call it like a hot air rework station. That's what I've always heard it called. But recently I've been getting into repairing gauge clusters and modifying them, so it was time to get something like this for me, but I do this just kind of on the side for fun, and I didn't need, you know, some of these $100, $200, $300 kits. So this particular one was 50 bucks when I bought it. It claims to be 700 watts. The brand is new, Acolox. Um seems to be pretty much like all these like little no-name brands are all generically the same thing some of them you just get like accessories with them um so this one you get solder sucker you get a little uh really tiny phillips screwdriver which is cool can't have enough of those you get some kind of tool in which i have no idea what it does some fine point tweezers again can't have enough of these i've got like five or six pair and some of these some of the little side cut snips these are also really nice um but you know don't buy one over the other because it has the stuff because this stuff is literally this is like eight bucks worth of stuff on amazon here is the hot air station itself um let's get everything out of the box first power cable and i am gonna go over with go over this with a multimeter because i've seen some stuff about that this is the little bracket for the hot air gun itself you've got three different sized hot air tips and then we've got this right here which is the gun itself so let's get it all opened up here so these tips aren't really like a quick change type deal. Um, it'd be cool if they clamp down or something, but they don't. So the way it works is you've got this little screw and then you've got a square nut and that must be what the screwdriver's for. So at least they give you what you need. I've got fat fingers, so this isn't easy. I'm done. And that gets it plenty tight enough. You don't have to use any other tool. Um, now these tips do appear to be pretty low quality. I mean, they're going to do the job. But hopefully you can see in there the, the metal work isn't the greatest. But again, those are going to do the job. I'm just nitpicking here. So We've got a little warning label. Looks like you can stick that on the machine if you want. And then the machine itself is actually really small. I'm surprised. Um, I'm sure this is an ad, but of course they always look way bigger than what they are. And you've got, on the right side, you've got these two screws. So this is for the uh, gun holster, whatever you want to call it. So you can put it on the right side or the left side. And then it just kind of sits in there like that. It goes in there effortless, effortlessly. There's nothing to clamp. You don't have to spread anything apart. So that's cool. I'm going to go ahead and put that on using the same supplied screwdriver. One thing with me, no matter how bad a product is, if they include the tools you need to put it together, that's a huge bump up in my book. This goes in just like this. Go ahead and plug that in there. Again, not the strongest feeling plug. Kind of got some resistance there. It's cheap on cheap. Um, knob feels pretty good. You got up and down. You got a power switch right here, which I like this. A lot of these I see the power switch is on the back here. And once I, you know, kind of get my desk put together, like I don't want to be, you know, reaching in the back to turn stuff off. I kind of want this up and out of the way. So, you know, I've got the most room to do whatever it is that I'm working on. And this feels good in the hand. I've never used one of these before. I've never seen one in person. I've never held one before. So um, it's 
honestly like a soldering iron on steroids. I mean, that's what it feels like. It's just a big fat soldering iron, basically. So this is the intake vent. This um, is where like the air is sucked in, obviously. So you don't want to like hold this thing like this or anything like that because you probably overheat it and damage it. I believe it has like a protection shut off if this does overheat, but put it in there and boom. Um, the cord. One thing I've heard on a lot of reviews is these cords are really stiff. And you know, when, when these cords are stiff, like this thing is so light, it's going to move around. You're going to be like bumping into stuff and, you know, shoving stuff around on your workbench, just moving this. This cord feels really nice. It feels like silicone. I might be completely wrong, but it's really flexible. I feel like after a few uses, you know, the, the factory little bends will be out of it. And then boom, you know, it doesn't like push it up or something like that. Make it where you can't use it. So here is the concern. On a lot of these power plugs, I've seen on the reviews that these pins are switched around. So I don't know if that's just a cheap manufacturing. I'm sure that's probably what it is, but definitely want to make sure you get polarity correct. So this claims to be 110 volts, 700 watts. Let's power it up, see what happens. All right, you guys, I do apologize. Um, my multimeter was out in the garage, so I wasn't, I just ran out there real quick, tested the cord, and then came back in. I didn't record it. Um, all my pins are correct, so that's good. I plugged it in right here. It is plugged in under my desk. Um, everything is connected, so you want to make sure this uh, your heat gun is connected before you turn it on. This right here is going to be our fan control, I believe, and then this is going to be to adjust the temperature. And this one claims to go to 212 degrees Fahrenheit to 932 degrees Fahrenheit or 500 degrees Celsius. So we're going to turn it on. So SLP, it just kind of did like a little boot. Um, SLP means sleep, which because it's in the little holster here, then I take it off and it instantly comes on. So there's a little bit of a buzz from the fan, but not bad. And this is basically on our lowest setting here. And I'm gonna turn it up. So you see it's at 200 right now. And turn the temp all the way down to 100. So I'm gonna assume this is Celsius. Let me see what the max goes to. Yep, so this is gonna be Celsius. I'm going to turn it to like, I don't know. I'm in Michigan. I'm in uh, the United States, so I'm not really familiar with Celsius, even though Canada is right above the border here, or right above us. But I'm going to turn it up. And it is definitely getting hot. There's like a bag right here. Let's see if it'll like, see that? So it is definitely hot, it gets hot quick, and then let's see what happens when we put it right back in the holster. So it switches to off, and then the fan goes up to high, no matter what setting you have it at. And then it's cooling right down. See, it's not doing anything to the bag. Well, I guess you can't really see it on camera, but it's not doing anything else to the bag. The air is warm at best right now. Maybe it feels like what's coming out of your furnace. See what? And I'm not sure what it sounds like on camera. Okay, cool. So let's say maybe 20, 30 seconds. Um, I don't know how it sounds on camera, but it is really quiet. Um, I would compare it to maybe an older desktop computer or even like a, a PlayStation or something like that that has some cooling issues, you know, and the fans run at really high speed. That's what I could compare it to. You can take this thing off and easily sit here and have a full conversation. Turn on high. You know, it's a little bit loud, but you can still talk right over it. Let me see, I got the fan on low. Put it back in there. It turns off, turns the heating element off, turns the fan on high. And this heats up quick because this air is really hot already, just from those few seconds I was holding it. I'm going to go ahead and turn it off, though, for the rest of the video. 
Um, I haven't used it yet. Obviously, you guys have saw what I've seen so far. The only thing I did off camera was just make sure those leads were correct. So this is an 858D SMD rework station, or 858D. If you guys want to see what's inside here, I kind of want to see what's inside. So case just slides right off and that's literally it. So one thing I noticed right off the bat is that this is properly grounded, at least appears to be properly grounded. Um, and what that is, that middle pin right there, that is like the ground, that is that like that third prong that's at the bottom. Um, and what that does, that prevents this thing from ever, because this is metal, and that would prevent this thing from ever like shorting out and this case becoming like live and you know you touch this or touch one of the components and it shocks the hell out of you and you know possibly hurts or kills you. Um, what that would do is instantly trip your breaker and you want that. A lot of these cheap Chinese units do not have that. They appear to be, they have the prong, they have the plug. Some of these wires will be connected to some stuff but it's like tied in somewhere and you can't see it. So this one is screwed. The way I can tell without even using my multimeter is that it is uh, attached to a lug right here, which you can't really see. Yeah, yeah, you can. It's attached to a lug right there, which is screwed right into the chassis of this. And then it's also connected to the board. I'm not sure if that's normal, but I mean, everything appears to be pretty solid, so. We got 110 volts, 85, 110 volts, 858A. Back also says that, this also says D, I'm not really sure if there's a difference, but it works, so there's that. Everything looks good though, I mean, clean wiring, um, the solder connections look good, they don't look cheap and messed up to, you know not cheap, not messed up but a lot of times you see like a lot of excess flux or something on there that just looks like crap looks good um one little excess piece of solder right there but that's off to the side that's no big deal so all right guys um if you enjoyed this review and unboxing and tear down i guess you would call it go ahead and leave a thumbs up i'd greatly appreciate it um if you like this type of stuff go ahead and subscribe check out my channel see what uh see what other stuff you like appreciate you guys watching thank you